Let's open with ourselves in a cross leg and seat, the feet right underneath the knees, and turn the palms down along your thighs. Sit up tall through the spine. Soften the gaze or close your eyes. Bring our awareness to the breath. Start with an easy breath, just no force, no change, except for taking notice. And then even still keeping the eyes closed, we'll use our arms to help guide that breath a little bit more. Inhale, lift the arms up towards the sky. Then exhale and slowly drape the arms back down. Nice and easy. Turn the palms up. Inhale, arms overhead. Turn the palms out. Exhale, arms sweep back down. Follow the rise and fall of the breath with the movement of the arms two more times. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale and exhale. Grab hold of the knees again. Pull the chest forward and through. Arch through the back. Chin up. Eyes towards the sky. Exhale. Round the back. Tuck the chin down to the chest. Do this a few more times, then moving at a pace that feels nice to you. Again, our intention today through the practice is not to bring judgment or control through our movements and actions, but simply almost to be that fly on the wall. So separate the thoughts from what's good, bad, let it all be present and full, more easeful in your approach. Go back to your neutral spine and give everything a little bit of a shake and a wiggle. Open the mouth, exhale out. Okay, as we open the eyes back up, Make your way over to all fours. Hands right underneath the line of the shoulders and knees underneath the line of the hips. We'll keep that cat-cow motion going back and forth here, now from all fours. Change the downward facing dog by moving the hands a little forward, tuck the toes and then lift the hip and pedal up the feet. One way I like to uh, shake up the practice and do less control for myself is to change the warm up to be a little different than the lunges I usually start with and that helps Sorry, my earbud fell out. That helps to uh, change mindset as well. So we're gonna come all the way flat down to the mat. Prop up on your forearms for Sphinx pose here. Push down through the forearms to feel a lift in the chest and look just straight ahead. Great, let's bend the right knee. Kick the heel in towards your seat. No need to use the hands yet, but already maybe finding an opening through the front of the thigh. Back muscles engaging and strengthening. And then release the right leg down and kick the left heel in towards the seat. Release it, go back over to the right side. This time, if you'd like to hold on, right hand to the foot and kick the foot away from you, so into the hand rather than trying to pull it in. Keep elongating the quad. Okay. 
Let's release. Go over to the second side. Left heel squeezes in. Either staying there or adding left hand. I've got thumb turned down. Hands on the outside hold of the foot. If you like the reverse with the palms lift up, thumb up. Feel free. And then we'll release and lie flat down to the belly. Stretch your arm, right arm straight out to the side. And this to open up pecs and shoulders. Roll over the right side. Step the left foot behind the right. Let your head lead down to the mat. And then come back across your center. Stretch the left arm out. Right hand comes right beside the chest. And again, you roll over the left side. This should be pretty easeful. We're not trying to overdo things here. Let the head lay down instead of staying lifted. And then we roll back along to the belly. Nice, easy baby cobra. Lift the hands and the feet. And then lift the chest. Squeeze on the glutes here. Bring the heels in close towards one another. Feel a little rock with the breath. All right. And this is where we release down. Child's pose. Push hips back towards the heels. Come on back up to all fours. Take the right hand out to the side. Lift it straight up to the sky now. And then thread through, shoulder, ear, side of the face, down to the mat. Stretch your left arm straight out in front of you. Keep it there or lift it to the sky. It can stay there or drop behind your back on the right side. And then walk it all the way back, left hand beside your face, help yourself up. And do it on the second side, left arm goes straight out to the side. Twist to open to the sky. And then twist to fold underneath, shoulder ear side of the face. Same thing, right hand can stay right there, stretch out in front of you. Up, or tuck it behind the opposite hip. Think about that control factor. Just because one side does something doesn't mean that you have to make the other side do the exact same variation. Be open to those dissimilarities. We take the right hand back beside the face and use it to come all the way back up. Breath in and breath out. Downward facing dog, tuck the toes, lift the hips, big stretch. Right into side plank today, balance on your right hand, the outer edge of your right foot. Let your left leg do what you want, step it forward, stack it or lift it in the air. And then the left hand up to the sky. Another great variation could be right knee down, left leg flat. Bring it back to full plank. Knees, chest, and chin. So keep the hips lifted in that little grasshopper status. Pull it into cobra with the press of the hands now, press of the feet down, feel the chest step. And change to downward facing dog. Second side, balance on your left hand, outer edge of the left foot. And again, that right foot gets to choose. Step it forward, stock it, or lift it in the air. Right hand open to the sky. Again, the other variation would be left knee down, right leg straight.
Can we take it again to plank position? Eight angle poses, knees, chest, chin. Pull it into cobra. And change to downward facing dog. Let's bend our knees a lot and walk our hands backwards to our feet. So we're at the back end of the yoga mat. Hang over in ragdoll pose. Hold on to the elbows, release the head. Let yourself just sway a little bit from side to side. From there, nice little roll all the way up to standing. Shoulders go up, back, and down a couple of times. And then shoulders back, forward, and down. Inhale, lift the arms up to the sky. And exhale, forward fold. A little change up. We'll do our sun salutations here from the back of the mat. So then walk your hands forward until you come into plank position. We'll ride into that vinyasa flow, lower down to the mat. You have the chest up a little or a lot. Downward facing dog, lift the hips back up. Take your right leg high into the air, three-legged dog. Pull the knee into the chest, hover forward for just a moment. And then step it all the way through. Today, let's drop the back knee down to the floor. Walk your hands up to your front thigh to bring the torso vertical. Next stage, lift the arms to the sky. Maybe sink a little bit lower into the front heel. But still pull that back knee in for a good sense of strengthening in the back side as well. Cactus goddess goalpost arms, however you want to name it. Bend at the elbows out to the side. Curl up and over the heart space. That sense of being here, open to what comes. Straighten the arms. Take the hands back down around the front foot. Do pick up the back knee and step forward, both feet to the front end of the mat. Inhale, half lift, extend the spine. Exhale, forward fold. Stand up, reach the arms to the sky. Bring the palms together, center of the chest. This, I think, is a great simple practice in controlling less. Walk to the back of your mat without looking where you're going, just slowly feeling the feet, one step at a time, until you find your mountain pose again, back into the mat. Here we are, ready to go, second side. Lift the arms to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Nicely done. Walk it out to down dog and then right into plank. Chaturanga has the little hover or drop it flat down. Maybe change it up from time to time so it's not always the same thing. That helps give us an open mindset. Cobra to downward facing dog. Lift your left leg high, three-legged dog. Pull the knee forward into the chest, hover, and then step it through. Again, we'll start with back knee down, walk the hands up to the front thigh, establish nice vertical spine. Take the arms overhead. Maybe let the hips sink a little more down and forward, but keep the control right now in the strength of the legs. But the legs low back staying secure in its place, then we give some room for the upper back, bend at the elbows, take it into that goddess shape, look straight ahead or up. We'll straighten the arms. Take the hands back around the front foot. Step it all the way forward to the front end of the mat. 
Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Stand up, reach the arms to the sky. Palms to the center of the chest. One more time, let's take that practice of walking slowly back to the back of the mat. Notice what's happening with the breath as you do that. Keep it even as much as possible. Again, from the back of the mat, inhale, lift the arms up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Walk it back to, down, uh, to plank position, through down dog to plank. We'll switch it up, go back to that knees, chest, and chin with the hips hovering, grasshopper. Pull through just a little baby cobra, and you can pick up your feet and your hands, a little more like locust pose variation here. Press it back to child's pose. Full breath in. Full breath out. And we're going to put these pieces of the pie together. So go to downward facing dog from there. Side plank, right hand, outer edge of the right foot. And again, every single time you're in side plank today, Pick your choice, your option. Maybe try it in different ways. And now step your left foot all the way forward into a low lunge. Doesn't have to be graceful. Take your time, get it there. Then walk the hands up to your front thigh. Lift both arms to the sky. Then the elbows come into that goddess shape. Straighten the arms again, spin the back heel down to open yourself to warrior two. So turn towards the long edge of your mat, but still gaze forward over the fingertips. From here, cartwheel your hands down to the floor. Step forward, top end of the yoga mat. Half lift. Forward fold. Stand, reach the arms to the sky. Palms together, center of the chest. We're going to stay at the top of the mat now. Change it up again. Lift the arms to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Half lift. Plank position. It's knees, chest, and chin. Baby cobra looking more like a supported locust pose. Hands just hovering feet up. Child's pose, push back. Give it an extra breath. Inhale and exhale. Change to downward facing dog. Left hand outer edge of the left foot, your variation of side plank. Try to keep that left shoulder pulled back just a tiny bit from the back of the wrist so as not to drive too much weight down into the left hand. Again, you're picking your option there. And then change right foot forward into your low lunge. That becomes a high lunge, torso upright, arms to the sky. Bend the elbows. Straighten the arms again, spin the left heel down, returning to the second direction for warrior two. As you deepen the bend of the front knee and thigh, push weight equally into the back leg. Again, gaze easily over the right fingertips, meaning don't strain. Soften the face and breath. 
and cartwheel the hands down around the front foot, step forward to the front end of your yoga mat. Half lift, forward fold. Stand your arms to the sky, palms together, center of the chest. Take a breath in, a breath out. Keep checking in, place a hand over heart, hand over belly. Go back to that intention. Be open, less control, just what comes. Dig into what feels right. We're gonna keep adding pieces of the pie for this flow today. Hands can go back to the waist here. Kick your right heel towards your seat. Grab the right hand to the outside of the foot. Kind of back to where we started as we did with the left arm straight up to the sky to get into that quad stretch. Spread the right toes wide and start to press the foot into the hand. And lift the hand higher up towards the sky to take you into dancer pose, Natha Rajasana. Again, play with this. Be open to even falling off balance and out and trying it again so that you're not stuck in the same way or conundrum of this pose. Does it work better if you bend the left knee? or not. Just try things out. And then set the right foot back down. Shake it out a little bit. Reset. And I want you to try it one more time. The exact same thing on the very same side. Hands to the waist. Kick the right heel. Okay. And we're going to change something. So before, if you were with me, I had thumb down, holding the outside of the foot. We're going to flip that palm up and catch the big toe side of your foot, the inside edge. And then give it all the same effort. Push the foot back into the hand. Hand actively lifts the leg a little bit to come into that back bend. Do something a little different with the left hand. Maybe it goes out to the side, more like an airplane wing. Some folks like a little mudra here. Thumb and first finger together. Yana mudra brings wisdom, maybe brings wisdom on how to stay balanced. At this time, I want you to release that right foot and step it all the way back right into your high lunge, both arms to the sky. Remembrance of being open is goddess arms each time in class today, goddess arms. Straighten the arms and the right heel down, warrior two. Good, and then cartwheel the hands down to the floor here. Everything is a little bit backwards now in the flow to keep us in that open mindset. So here is where you go to side plank. You turn to the outside edge of the right foot, left arm, left leg on top. Come back through a plank position. Go down to the mat however you want. Did you like that eight point pose or just flat down? Cobra, up dog, any back bend here, it becomes your option to explore. Try to do different things. And then go to downward facing dog. From down dog, look forward to the hands. Step or jump to the front end of the yoga mat. Half lift. Forward fold. Stand up, reach the arms to the sky. Palms together, center of the chest. We're 
We're gonna do mostly the same thing on the second side. If I lead us a little bit astray, no big deal, right? We'll come together. Kick the left heel towards your seat. You know you're trying that two times in a row here. So you choose how you start it out. Pull the outside or the inside of the foot. Right hand can be high out to the side, something different. Go into that first option of Natarajasana for you. I always feel like there's a distinct beauty that's inherent in this pose. Could be just that I like that it's called dancer pose. Come back down. Give yourself that wiggle and shake. Anytime I see a picture, I don't think that's wrong, that's right. Why is she holding her foot that way or this way? Why is she more forward or more upright? I just think, wow, it's a lovely pose. Continue to be open with yourself in that way and try it a second time. Left heel towards your seat. Grab hold. Try something different than you did the first time around, even if it's the smallest difference. Something internal in mindset, internal in breathing pattern. It all can change. And it's all right. This time as you release that left leg, you go right into your high lunge, two arms to the sky, and take it into goddess pose. Straighten the arms, spin the left heel down, warrior two. down to the mat. Now the front foot has to step all the way back into your uh, side plank, left hand, outer edge of the left foot on the ground, right arm to the sky. Looking amazing here, let's come through plank. Your unique vinyasa flow. Come on down through your back bend. And downward facing dog. One more breath right here and downward facing dog. Look to the hands, step, jump, walk forward. Half lift, forward fold. Stand, arms to the sky. Again, bring the hands in to the place of the heart. Keep them there or change back, hands, heart, and belly. Check in. I'm going to make a little bit of an abrupt change on purpose. From here, we're going into boat pose. If you can keep your gaze low, soft, no need to look at me, just transition into boat pose. However, you want to get there. That's sitting on your bum with your feet up, hands off the ground as well. And then from your boat pose, do bend the knees, send both legs over to the right side, the arms towards the left side and start to pedal. And yoga hour, we call this our cosmic abs, spinning through the universe. Take it on over to the other side. Cosmic abs. Play with if you go faster. What about if you go slower? Back to the first side. And to the second side. Let's 
Stop right back in the center. Boat, boat, boat. Navasana. And then lie flat down onto your back. On your back, reach the arms overhead. And then have just the right knee into the chest here. Squeeze it in good. Hold on to the back of your thigh or the calf. Straighten the right leg up to the sky. Plant the sole of your left foot on the floor. And then cross your right ankle over the left thigh. Point the knee out to the side. Keep going with your invention of this pose. Left knee can come into you. Thread the arms through. Other variations of this pose include straightening the left leg, bringing you almost towards plow position, kind of on mid-back though instead of shoulders. Play around. Now, if your arms are threaded through, take them out to a T-shape. Cross the right leg more over the left so that the legs come into eagle position. Let's add our eagle arms. Right elbow goes under the left. Hold on to your shoulders or the palms. If you lift your head and shoulders off the mat and try to make your knees and elbows touch, and then open them as far away from one another as possible. And do it four more times. Tap and open. Tap, open. Good. Two more times. Tap, open. Tap, and open. Hands go back out to a T shape. Soles of both feet on the ground. Keeping the feet mat distance apart, let the knees sway from side to side like windshield wipers here. If you like to hold the pose more than the movement, that's fine too. Finally, for this side, I want the left leg to be straight along the mat and just the right knee Gate opener is going to make circles. Knee comes in, out, around to the side. Leg goes straight down towards the mat. So you're just making big circles with the head. Leg. Circle in the opposite direction. So from the outside in, usually. And then we'll end on this side as we started. Hug that knee into your chest. Nice, strong squeeze. Great release in the hip flexor there. And then right leg goes all the way down to the mat. Give it that moment of uh, shavasana, if you will. A couple of breaths. And we'll give these things a go on the second side. Pull the left knee into the chest. Hug it in. Again, even though we have two sides of the body, it's not always symmetrical and uh, flexibility, the range of motion. Be good to yourself. No need to control doing exactly the same amount of stretch or range as you did on the first side. Make the left leg go straight up towards the sky. Hold behind the left thigh or the calf. All right, and then we set the sole of the right foot on the ground. Go to your figure four shape. And 
Add in any variations here that you like, maybe bringing the right knee in, folding the arms to hold under the thigh or on top of the shin. Again, other options might be to straighten the right leg, get a little more of that hamstring stretch. And then pulling the bum off the ground. And then we're going to take the hands out to a T shape. Press the left knee all the way over. Squeeze the outer ankle into the calf for your eagle legs. Let's cross the left elbow under, hold on to your shoulders or the hands. And again, can you lift head and shoulders up and make the elbows and knees touch? And then we're opening it up and tapping four more times. Four and open. Three and open. Two. You know what? Let's do two more just to show that we can be in balance. It's no big deal. One more tap. And then you release the hands, release the legs, and go back into that windshield wiper from side to side. Again, if you like a more static release here, you might just stay legs to one direction. I like the movement. Stretch the right leg straight along the ground. Again, pull the left knee into the chest. And then bring both knees back into the chest. We're going to use this to help rock ourselves all the way up. Come on back up to a seated position. Stretch your legs straight out in front of you. Friends, we are going to have a little bit more time standing, but first we're going to do a bit of seated position here. Pull the right foot in as if you are in tree pose. And just a nice simple forward fold over the extended leg. From there, we'll mix it up a little bit. So if you have your left leg extended out in front of you, you're gonna take the opposite hand, the right hand to hold onto the outside edge. And then swing your free arm back behind you and look over that left shoulder. Take that hand, both hands back to your foot and come all the way upright. Send the right leg straight, fold the left foot into tree pose. Knee points as much out to the side as works. And again, easy forward fold to start out with. Both hands can grab hold of the right foot. And then you're having the left hand sneak over to the pinky toe side of the foot. Free up the right hand. Take it back. Look back with it. Still mostly forward in your fold. Release out of the twist and come back upright in the torso. Send both legs straight out in front of you. Seated forward fold. Use the hands to hold on to both of your feet, even if that means bending your knees to get there. Be open that you don't have to have straight limbs here in the seated forward fold. And 
Okay, be playful enough in mindset that there's no wrong way to do this. But from the seated forward fold, holding onto your feet. As you try your best to keep holding onto the feet, whether it's the outer edges of the feet, or I'm gonna take my first two fingers and thumb and wrap it around the big toe. And then pull the heels closer into the body to come into what's boat pose, but holding onto the toes. We call it both big toes pose. Not much uh, exaggeration from the physical form there. Legs as straight as they can go while holding onto your feet. Find the sense of strength in the belly. Again, with that sense of playfulness, no control in terms of mindset being set on one way to do things. I want you to get from this position into a standing forward fold. Again, can you hold onto your feet most of the time? So I'm gonna bring my feet back down to the ground. When I say most of the time, I know that I'm probably gonna to have to release here, but I'm just gonna be open to what can happen. What if I got a little bit of rock and roll happening? As quickly as possible, I'm gonna lift over towards the squat, hold back to the toes, and come into a standing forward fold. Do your best. Knowing that's the right way to go. Okay, you're down here holding on to your toes, yes? Keep holding on to your right foot and take your left hand to your waist. Now, can you stand up and keep holding on to your leg? Maybe, maybe not. Use some support. Get it going however is best for you. And then turn that back into your dancer pose that we did a little bit earlier. Right foot back, left arm for support. Up, out to the side, wherever you want. Release the foot and go into a high lunge. Again, that signal of openness in cactus arms. That sweeps us into warrior two. Adding on a little bit here, can you go left elbow to the uh, thigh, right arm overhead and side ankle pose. And this is different now in terms of we're staying on the same side. From here, change to side plank. Get the left hand down to the floor and left knee down or left leg straight with the legs stacked. Side plank. Yeah, loving it. Go to full plank. Move through the vinyasa flow that you choose. Downward facing dog. Guess what, from here, we've gotta to get to boat pose. Again, not thinking about one specific way to do it, just how it works in your body. Get to boat pose. Bottom down legs and arms. From boat pose, can you go back into the toe hold? And then from here, back into a standing forward fold. I'm gonna let go of my feet, if that feels right. And then once I get into the fold, hold back to the feet. Something along those lines. <laughs> I know I've got to step back coming forward, so I'm just gonna sort of walk, waddle my way up to the front of the mat, make sure you're more towards the front end. And then take the right hand to your waist. As you start to come upright, pull the left leg with you, playing with it into Natarajasana, dancer pose. Release into your high lunge, right foot forward. Goddess arms. 
Warrior two. Side angle pose. Side plank, right hand down. And from there into full plank and your vinyasa flow. Mix it up. We'll end it in child's pose here. So instead of downward facing dog, just press back to child's pose. Use this as the reset. Hands can make a little pillow for the forehead. Be heavy and full right here for a moment. Crawl back out along to the belly and line up for Sphinx pose. This is how you started at the beginning of class. The elbows right underneath the line of the shoulders press down through your forearms to lift the chest. Bend your right knee to bring the heel in towards you. So different now, with the right hand, you're grabbing hold of the right foot all through the class. So we've been pushing the foot into the hand. I want you to try to make the hand pull in so the heel goes closer to your butt now in a deeper quad stretch. I've hooked my thumb around the big toe side, pulled the toes down, fingers down to make the elbow go up to the sky. And a nice, slow, steady release. No snap of the rubber band there. Go back to Sphinx. And then approach the second side. Left heel towards the seat. So that I have a little bit more traction, I'm turning my right forearm in. So like the right hand is holding on to the left elbow for a moment. And then the left hand goes back, left arm. Another way to make this much more accessible is to go all the way over towards the right side. And then you can play with that quad stretch, heel towards the seat. Again, you might need a different approach on one side than the other. Nothing wrong with that. That is showing a sense of freedom instead of control for how things should be. As you release it all the way down, let's go into your cobra pose, any cobra that you'd like here. Arms straighter, more bent, lower, higher. I've got my hands and legs a little wider here. As you lie it back down, flip over onto your back. Soles of the feet to the mat. We've got just a tiny bit left of movement. Bridge pose, press down into your feet, shoulders, back of the head, and lift the hips up. Hold to the edge of your mat, interlace the hands. Roll the shoulders. I usually interlace the hands, roll the shoulders, take a couple of breaths, and then I let the hands open again. 
as I'm really listening in, what feels best? And then bring yourself all the way back down. Hands over the belly, check in. I want to give you the opportunity for one more back bend here, and it's completely up to you. It'll be the same bridge pose. You go to a full wheel pose. Other options might be extended bridge pose, like legs straighter. Or opting out. Go for what you want right here. And you're on time, come on down. Add in a counter pose to that back bend, meaning how does your body want to move next? I like a good hug of the knees in. Some folks practice fish pose afterwards. Supine twist. This is your opportunity. Add in those next bits that will help you prior to Shavasana. I'm remembering right now that I forgot the big gate opener circles on the left leg. I'm gonna add them in now. And then when you're ready, come to a sense of stillness, body, mind. You can lie back for the Shavasana, or if you prefer that seated position that we started in.
Slowly take your time now to come back, attention, breath, and body together. Make your way to a seated position, if not already. Let's take this last minute to reflect. Is there one thing that comes to mind that you uh, let a little more freedom and openness come to you in the physical practice. A little less control, if you will. And then reflecting that into the day ahead, the next day ahead. Is there anything that you can be a little bit more gentle with yourself? less controlled. We'll carry that mindset forward, palms together, thumbs to the sternum. A way of carrying that forward through the sound of OM. You're welcome to sing along, to listen, or to tune me out. Exhale here. Deep breath in. Ah, gratitude to you, each other, and this practice. Till next time. Thank you.